Hi, this is Pad Love with Pad's Two Cents. <clears throat> Reading Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verses thirteen and fourteen. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now that's the scripture, Pat's two cents. That's the scripture we really, really need to be mindful of. Because with the fires going on off the 118 and 210 in Sunland, in Sunland, California. And then you got the floods in Texas. And the stench and the, the E. coli and the, the, oh my goodness, it's crazy. Listen, we have got to pray. Now, I'm going to tell you what I feel. I may be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I believe that judgment has come, has begun. And I also believe that this is the beginning of sorrows that Revelations refers to. Starting the tribulation period. So what I want to ask you to do is to pray. Those of you who say you're born again Christians, who say that you are in Christ Jesus, stop laying around with each other. Stop cussing each other out and using cuss words like it's part of the daily vernacular of the English language when it is not part of God's vernacular, yet you say you're in God. Stop being bitter. If you can't stop on your own, ask God to help you. He will. Choose to forgive. Forsake sin. Avoid all appearances of evil. Don't hang with those that do whatever they want to do when they want to do it. If you really, really, really want God's mercy and you really want God to be mindful of you, show through your life, your actions, and your language, let me add, your attitude, that you are indeed mindful of God. He already said what to do. Pray. Seek his face. He will hear from heaven. But you've got to turn from your wicked ways. Don't forget that detail. So when you see all this going on, it is a wake up call. Wake up America. We have spit in God's face. We have fought it at his holiness. We have given him the, the finger to his commandments. We have totally disrespected him. We have totally had contempt for anything that had to do with God. We are denying him on the left and denying him on the right. Yet we want mercy. When our children start dying in floods and burning in fires, then we turn up, we either want mercy or we get angry with God. But a lot of these catastrophes are either by man's doing purposefully for depopulation and or God's judgment for sin, 
blatant, bold, belligerent, diabolical sin and rebellion. And listen, the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And to God, witchcraft is an abomination. I have watched on TV, on the news, well, not on TV, on YouTube, I don't have TV service, but on the news, I have watched parades where, I mean, gay parades where these men are dressed up the way they think Jesus looked. They're Jesus imitations with the crown of thorns, the robe, and the stripes on the back. They even mock that. And they turn around and one, they have two of them looking like that. One is bent over while the other one standing behind the first one, humping him like he's like a man screwing another a man in the behind. They're both dressed up, imitating Jesus Christ. See, God is not happy when he sees people mock the sacrifice that Jesus did for all of mankind. The stuff he suffered at the hands of his own creation for the sake of his own creation. And those of you have the nerve to spit at what he did. But yet, yet, yet now, if somebody turned around and beat up your child, your little brother, your friend, you would be up in arms. How dare you hurt some, how, that, what? That's somebody you love. How could they hurt somebody like that? But here's the trip. The person they're hurting has committed sin. The person they're hurting is contaminated with wickedness, bent, given to wickedness. Yet, the only one who has never committed sin, who loved us with an everlasting love, that's the one you mock. That's the one you could care less about what he endured, the suffering, the torture, the beatings, the spitting, the mocking. You don't care about that. And he did it for you. But you raise all kind of unholy hell about a sinful, a sinful person who's gotten beaten up. And you expect God to jump, Judy? You snap your finger, he's to jump. He's not a bellhop, but you want him hopping when you call. Mercy, Lord. Come on, Lord, answer my prayer. Deliver me, Lord. Really? I don't remember seeing him wearing a tux and, a, and, and having a tray in his hand, waiting for your every command. But when you don't need him, he's a big joke. I just want you to know, the only way we're going to see change in this country, the only way we're going to see mercy in people's lives, is if we do what 2 Chronicles 7.14 said to do. Are you willing to humble yourself, to confess your sins and forsake them? Or have you formed such a love affair with your sins that you dare not allow even God to come between you and your lover? 